So today I'm gonna to show you how I made this poster design and how I turned it into this shirt design. So just to be completely transparent, the band did not hire me to make this design. I'm doing this of my own volition. I was looking at my portfolio and I noticed that there just wasn't a whole lot of merch designs. I know I'm capable of doing it, but I just didn't really show it off that much. And so I wanna focus more of my time coming up with some more merch designs, so that way I can showcase what I can do, at least as far as merch designs go. And I figured if I'm gonna be doing a merch design, I might as well do it for a band that I like. And it also helped me come up with ideas, cause it's not just a random merch design, it's a merch design for a specific band and you know maybe a specific album. So that way I just have to come up with an idea that looks like it would go along with that specific album. So with all that out of the way, let's get into the poster design, and then after that we'll jump into the shirt design. Let's get to it. All right, so of course the very first thing that I had to do was cut out the subject from the background, which I'll probably just cut this up a little bit because there's not really a whole lot to show. Really it's just me using the built-in feature that Adobe has and then just going back through with the pen tool to clean up any of the edges that I thought could use some work. Not really anything crazy, pretty much exactly what you would expect. Pretty tedious, not fun, so I'll probably just skim over it. Okay, now that I have the subject removed from the background, I can actually start on the design. And my first instinct was to do something with this kind of circuit board pattern. I really like the kind of technical, digital, cyberpunk kind of look that the band kind of has on their album artwork. So I kind of wanted to develop something around that idea or around that aesthetic. Now I tried playing around with it, also just kind of changing them some colors and just kind of coming up with a general idea that I would kind of use. I wasn't really super happy with it, but that's fine because it's you know still the beginning of the project. And so there's lots of time to come up with the new ideas. Now recently I bought some of these kind of tribal looking assets from someone on Gumroad called Grimcraft. I believe that's how, I believe that's what they're called. And I thought this might be a cool way to kind of deviate from the album artwork, but I could still use it to kind of fit in. Cause I wanted to make it feel like a hardcore or metal band. Cause I mean, that's what they are. But so I didn't want to go too much into the digital route. So I thought maybe this would be a good in between because I could take these tribal patterns, make something cool that will fit the flow of the design, the flow of the robot that's kind of floating in the air and then turn it gold so that way it still kind of has like that metallic kind of aesthetic to it. And once I had those kind of built out the way that I liked and I thought it was coming along pretty well, I can start to move on to some more to some of the other aspects of the design that I wanted to look into. And what I thought was really cool is at the top, the way that the tribals are kind of composed, it looks like it's a perfect way just to kind of nestle a circle at the very top. Looks like it's being held up by the tribals. And so I was like, let me see if I can put something up there. That would be a good way to kind of compose the shirt. So that way it kind of draws your eye up to the top, but also the robot is also intersecting that circle. So it'd be a good way to kind of draw the eye to that circle. And then it would bring you down towards the robot. I tried the circuit board pattern, but it didn't really work. And so I thought, let me try something else. So I was like, maybe an eclipse. That would work perfectly fine. Even in my head, it worked. And so I brought a couple of assets in, tried some out, and then I finally landed on an image that I really liked. And then I just kind of did some adjustments on it so it would fit in correctly the way that it's supposed to. Overall, really happy with how that came out. I think that was a pretty good decision. Maybe not the most cybernetic kind of thing, but I still think it works. Now that I had most of the composition done, I wanted to work on incorporating the band's logo. Of course, this is a band t-shirt, so they're gonna wanna be able to advertise themselves. Sometimes I might not add the logo, sometimes I might, and I thought in this case it would actually work, especially with all the gold going on, it just worked out really well that way. And another one of the things that I wanted to kind of do to this design was to take the final image and then just add some glow to it, just so I felt like everything was kind of like reflecting off of each other. It was a lot brighter than it would actually look like. Kind of a subtle detail, but it would definitely help out and kind of make everything really feel glowing and alive, like the way it should. But from there, really what I wanted to focus on was just making the robot kind of like realistic as I possibly could make it. So this is just me just trying to blend in some of the lighting from the eclipse 
well as some of the shadows and things, so it would make a little bit more sense, seem a little bit more realistic, and I also think it'll make it look a little bit more dramatic, because that way the lighting will be very backlit, it'll feel very epic, and have a nice cool glow to it. So I thought in that way it would look more realistic as well as just look better. it was really just adding in some small details that I thought would kind of bring the poster together, just kind of fill out the, that space a little bit more. And so I had these kind of assets lying around that were very like kind of futuristic, cybernetic. And so I thought that'd be perfect just to kind of put at the bottom of the poster or something really small. So if you see it, great, it's there. Uh, I think it kind of brings the entire aesthetic kind of together, but you know, it's not drawing your eye too much and it's not too much of a distraction. And I also wanted to play around with that kind of circuit board pattern again. I didn't have any luck finding anything the other day whenever I was looking for the assets originally, but I remembered that I have a Adobe description. So I was like, let me see if they have any nice looking vectors that kind of have that circuit board pattern. Let me see if I can find something there. And so I went there, I downloaded some, I tested them out here, and then I ended up leaving one. I also gave that kind of a bevel, make it look a little bit metallic that way it would still fit in with everything else but it's kind of like a background element it doesn't do a whole lot but once again I feel like it just kind of fits with the aesthetic of the design and so I think it works but from there pretty much the only thing left to do is just to add some texture and call there all right now that I've got the poster design done we can move on to making it into a shirt design now normally I would just record the process of me making the t-shirt but for some reasons I don't really feel comfortable recording it the reason being that I'm using a template given to me by my friend Zach Schiffer. He gave me this template, taught me how to use it, so that way I can understand what's going on and I understand all the concepts behind it. But I didn't come up with the process and I didn't really come up with the idea, so I just want to make sure that he gets credit for that, as well as not showing off too much of what he's worked on, because I think it would be better for him to show off himself rather than me. So while I won't show you the step-by-step -step guide to get to the end result of the shirt design, I can still show you some of the thought process behind everything and how I ended up where I ended up. So let's get into the shirt design. But before we move on, let me tell you about today's sponsor, me. As of right now, I've got a couple different digital assets on my store, some that are free and some that you can purchase. I already have more plans to add things to the store, so as time goes on, I'll be adding a bunch of different things. I'm just trying to add a bunch of digital assets that I think are useful, and that I think you might also find useful. So if you're interested in checking those out, feel free to check the link in the description. Now let's get back to the video. All right, so the very first thing that I had to do was make some coloring adjustments to the design. Because the red that I used in the original design was a little bit too dark, and so it wouldn't really show up well with all the process that's going on. So if I were to go into here, as you can see, I have the new design and it shows up very well. I'm going to open up this and then I'm gonna drop in one of the older designs with the red. If I do that, as you can see, pretty much nothing shows up. It's just so dark. And so I had to make some adjustments in order to make sure that you could actually see what was going on and it wouldn't feel too weird. Along with that, I also had to do some level adjustments just because it felt a little bit too bright, there was gonna be a little bit too much white and I didn't like that. And so I just kind of brought everything down. But then later on, whenever I was going back through the design, uh, Vatican was just a little bit too dark. And I really wanted to stand out since it's you know, the band name, so it should be kind of a, a primary focus, but it wasn't. So I had to go back and I made another level adjustment specifically just for the word Vatican. So that way it would actually show up a little bit brighter and you could actually notice what it was. I also kept in some of these kind of texture cracks. They're just kind of nice just to kind of give it some texture or make it a little bit more worn so it's not so clean. Sometimes I like to do this, sometimes I don't. In this instance, I kind of liked it, so I stuck with it. And so that's just kind of where I went with it. Here's what the design looks like once I put it through all of the processing, which really at this part of the process is really just kind of coloring. Although sometimes it could be a little tweaking here and there 
because mostly what it is is just trying to figure out the layers, trying to figure out the threshold adjustments exactly where they need to be, and then coloring in the specific areas how you want them. And one of the biggest steps for this entire process is really just playing around with the colors, trying to figure out exactly how you want things to be, and then maybe going back in and making some adjustments. I remember at one point, the feet, they were a little bit light. I hadn't really darkened them up, and so it kind of looked like an eyesore. It was just kind of annoying because I didn't want them to necessarily be that bright. And so I had to, you know, go back into the smart object, make some adjustments, and then, you know, go back. Same thing like what I was talking about with the highlights where, you know, if I zoom in here, there's lots of white, and that's after me toning it down. So if you can imagine how bright and white it would be if I hadn't. And so it's kind of like a push and pull between, you know, I'm gonna update this, check it out, you know, put the colors in, see what it looks like, and then go back you know, check out the levels, you know, make some adjustments, come back, and you know, just going back and forth until you get to a point where you feel confident in whatever that you're making. And of course, along the way, you might adjust some of the colors. Initially, this was going to be just a three color design, but there was a couple spots where I wanted to make some adjustments, um, like the robot. Originally, it was just this gold color, which looks nice and it goes with the design, but it, I wanted it to pop a little bit more since it's kind of like the main focus. And so that's why I added in this kind of reddish orangish color. So that way it would still go well with the kind of warmer tones that are in here, but it would also stand out. Along with that, another one of the colors that I changed was this kind of green color because originally it was all just this red color, but I thought it looked a little bit better having some cooler tones. So that way you're really drawn to this figure in the center here. So that way you have cool on the outside and as you get closer, it's a little bit warmer. I felt like maybe the contrast might be a little bit better that way. So that way it's not all just warm colors. You have a little bit more contrast and your eyes will be drawn into the subject of the image. But I do still really like the red. So if I was actually doing this for the client, I might actually just send the two different versions just because they're pretty close. They're subtly different, but I do like both. So it might be good just to kind of give them an option and say, hey, which one do you prefer? But really that's pretty much it for the shirt design. There's not much else to talk about. But like I said, I'm not the person who came up with this process or the template, that's Zach Schiffer. So if you're interested in learning more about his process and how he does things, he has a YouTube channel, he has an Instagram, feel free to go check it out. I'm sure you'll be able to learn something about this process, especially since he's the one who made it, so he's gonna know more about it than I will. Plus, you can also buy the template, which is really nice, so that way you can kinda do what I've done here, and then you'll just save yourself a bunch of time and a bunch of headache. But that's pretty much it for the shirt design, so let's put everything together and see how everything turned out. So here's the final result for the poster design. Whenever I was making the t-shirt and I got rid of the red, initially I was doing that just because I needed the robot to kind of stand out on the shirt design, but I ended up liking this a little bit better than whenever I had the red on the robot. Even though the red was very striking and it looked great color-wise, and it was a good image, I just felt like it was too dark, and so you couldn't really tell what the image was. It just felt a little bit muddied, and so I felt like this definitely stands out more, and I think it also goes a little bit better with the aesthetics that the band was going for on their album. So like how I usually do, I didn't record the process and I just went back, made some adjustments, and now we're here. Then of course, here's the shirt design. Now, like I said earlier, initially I had to make a couple of changes in order to make the poster design work on the shirt design. And so there's always a bit of a process, and so it's never quite the same as just taking the image that I've already done, putting it into the template, and then boom, it's done. Now, I will say that most of the work was definitely done making the actual image, but it does take time to kind of go through the image and then making sure that it converts well onto the merch design. And overall, I'm happy with this design. I definitely like the composition, it looks interesting. I think it goes well with the aesthetic that the band was going for. And I also just like the colors. Overall, I'm really happy with how it came out. And if I had the chance to buy this shirt, I just might. But I'd love to hear what you guys thought about this design. Did I do well? Did I do poorly? Should I have done something differently? Let me know in the comments. And of course, as always, if you found this video helpful or entertaining in any way, I'd appreciate it if you would check out the rest of my channel and then consider subscribing. I hope to see you in the next video.